Donald Trump promising as well a big announcement tomorrow. Listen in. Thursday, I will outline my full economic plan, which is completely paid for through economic growth and proposed federal budget savings. Together, our tax, trade, regulatory, and energy policies will add trillions and trillions of dollars in new deficit-lowering growth. Okay, so we're going to hear a lot more from him on the economy tomorrow. Meanwhile, we're going to hear about his health. Trump is also appearing on the Dr. Oz show, where he will release the medical records of his latest physical for the first time. Joining me with his thoughts on this race, as it now stands, RNC Communications Director Sean Spicer. Good to have you back. Thanks for having me here. Wow, all right. You were saying, and uh, Ryan's was saying as well, that things were going to tighten up by Labor Day. Right. Here we are. Here we are. Um, so what's the path? Is he going to take on uh, Hillary here in, in more battleground states? Well, you, you know, the interesting thing is that, and, and you pointed out correctly, that both Ohio and Nevada have now not just gone back, but, but put Trump ahead. And the swing is significant. In Nevada, it's six points. In, in Ohio, it's, it's more than five. Where she was leading significantly, and now not only is he tied, but he's ahead. I think that's significant. You're seeing more and more states do that. Florida's leaning that way. Iowa, New Hampshire, we're tied in Maine. One of the things that the mainstream media has not talked about is when, in 2012, the Romney path to 270 electoral votes was very narrow. You had to take Virginia. You had to take certain other states. This time, if you look at it, we're talking about Pennsylvania. We're talking about Michigan. We're talking about New Hampshire. We're talking about uh, Nevada and Iowa, states that were completely off the map last time. There actually is an expansion of the map. Now, each of them in themselves isn't a huge amount of electoral votes, mm -hmm. but you start combining those electoral votes, and that path to 270 has actually gotten broader for so Donald Trump why, why over what it was that? from I Romney. Mean, I, I've said all along, I think in some ways, parties kind of out the window in that uh, a lot of traditional Democrats, blue-collar Democrats that worked in union shops are saying, hey, my job just got shipped to Mexico. That's right. I might as well give this guy a shot. Is that what's happening? Th there's a lot of that happening. Trump is not a traditional Republican. He's not a traditional politician. And I think whereas it contrasts significantly with Hillary Clinton, she's the epitome of, of Washington. She's the epitome of the establishment and the status quo. And if that's what you want, then I think you're going to go with her. But to your point, there's a lot of blue-collar workers. There's a lot of union workers. There's a lot of disaffected or angry Americans mm -hmm. who are t grown tired of a government. And frankly, to some degree, both parties mm -hmm. telling them, elect me, things will change. I think they're ready to give somebody a chance who's going to shake things up. And Trump speaks to that. You know, and Sean, the criticism all along had been that he's not appealing to enough women. Right. He certainly tried to make some inroads there right. last night. I mean, I, I think this is a very innovative policy. We're going to talk about it a little bit more in depth coming up. But he's talking about offering a tax credit to women who stay home to take care of their kids, or men for that matter, uh, same-sex marriages would be included in this, um, as well as a tax credit to uh, families that, that have both spouses working. That's right. As Ivanka noted last night, it's been 60-plus years since the tax code was written to address families. And we all know what it was. I mean, I grew up with a mom that stayed mm -hmm. home. Dad went off to work. Yeah, Nowadays, too. you've mm -hmm. got both parents going to work every day in, in most cases. A lot of times, the woman being the breadwinner, right? And the dynamic has shifted, and the tax code needs to catch up. There are three important points. One, you mentioned the tax credit that helps. Two, there was a dependent care account that got set up. And it's not just for kids. It meant, you know, for other dependents that you have and also for elder care, which is growing important because, again, as the society shakes out and grows and modernizes, you're seeing a lot more parents move back in with the kids as they grow older. And third, this idea of, of paid maternity or uh, of post-pregnancy leave for, for moms up to six weeks that Ivanka and, and Mr. Trump both talked about, that's important. It recognizes the, the changing environment that we live in 60 plus Look, years I, I, I after his first proposal. I think it's phenomenal. I think that women face a lot of challenges, right. uh, working women with kids, uh, families that are trying to make ends meet, and a lot of times the daycare budget is, is you know, hogging up That's most right. of the paycheck. And so this is all important stuff to be talking about and important proposals to hear. Um, of course, there's always the reality of how you're going to pay for it. Well, and again, and I think they're starting to look at that. He talked about talk, expanding it through the unemployment insurance account, where there is reports of tremendous amount of fraud. One of the things that, again, it goes back to the philosophy of what Trump is. He's going to go in, shake things up, and do things differently and not accept the status quo. There is fraud down there. There's a problem. And there's a level of bringing a private sector experience to this to say that we've got to root out a lot of the problems that exist, the accounting measures, and saying, how can we do these better yeah. and not just accept the government, oh, well, this is the degree of fraud that you should accept. Okay, finally, we're short on time, but I want to ask you about ground game. Yeah. We're seeing an improvement in ground game. Oh, yeah. 
Um, what, is your, what are your thoughts on that? Well, Where do you still need well, to focus? Look, here's the thing. When you hear the Clinton campaign talk about it, is offices opening. We've got plenty of offices. I can account. You want a Trump sign or a bumper sticker? I can tell you where the office is. But what we've done is last cycle we had 596 staff out in the battleground states. This time it's over 6,000. We made an early investment under Chairman Priebus to put these people in battleground states years ago. Mm -hmm. And it's paying off because at the end of the day, voter contact work. You pointed out registration, Republican registration is up in almost every state, Democratic registration down. And 72% of Republicans that register during a presidential year vote. Wow. We know that statistically. So you're getting an enthusiasm oh, gap yeah, going but, on. Yeah. How much does her health concerns uh, now play into that enthusiasm Well, gap? I think it's not the health. We, we understand that she's, you know, needed some time off. Yeah. She wasn't doing well, and, and, and we hope she gets better. But the reality is how they handled it is the bigger problem with Hillary Clinton. These, these cover-ups and, and miss, you know, frankly, not telling right, the entire you're, truth. You're, you're left wondering, well, what the heck was right, going on? It, Why didn't they just say what it was? How they handled it reinforces that Clinton narrative that you can't trust her and that she's got one set of rules for her and one for everyone else. All right. Well, Sean Spicer, good to see you, Thank sir. You, Thank you so much. Interesting time.